Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on a Gemini Jets Royal Air Force VIP Airbus A330 MRTT multi-role tanker transport Voyager better known as Voyager Force One in their new livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model from Easy Toys and their website address is www.easytoys.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular aircraft model, please allow me to share you some information about the history of the Royal Air Force and how they actually came about. The Royal Air Force was actually formed towards the end of World War I on April 1st, 1918 by merging the Royal Flying Corps and the Royal Naval Air Service and it is still the oldest independent Air Force still operating in the world today, as it is considered the Air Force of the United Kingdom. And since its inception and formation in 1918, the Royal Air Force has taken a significant role in the history of British military, playing a large vital part in the Second World War, where it fought its most famous strategic bombing campaign against Germany during the summer of 1940 that became known as the Battle of Britain. Whereas the staff headquarters of the Royal Air Force is located in the Whitewall Westminster section of London, England, and although most of the Royal Air Force aircraft and personnel are based in the United Kingdom, the Royal Air Force still operates a number of bases overseas to support global operations to ensure the security and defense of the United Kingdom and overseas territories to support the government's foreign policy objectives, particularly in promoting international peace and security, which includes fighting against all terrorism on all fronts. As of May 2022, or at the time of this video review posting, the Royal Air Force maintains an operational fleet of various types of aircraft described by the Royal Air Force as being leading edge in terms of technology as their fleet largely consists of fixed wing aircraft including fighter and strike aircraft, airborne early warning and control aircraft, I-STAR intelligence surveillance target acquisition and recognizance and signals intelligence aircraft, aerial refueling aircraft, and strategic and tactical transport aircraft which includes 14 Airbus A330-200 MRTTs, multi-role tanker transport Voyager aircraft, including this one you're looking at here, with no unfulfilled orders pending on this particular aircraft type. And the Airbus destination code for the Royal Air Force on this particular aircraft is 43. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box here. And what you're looking at is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal. You see the Royal Air Force uh, decal as well as its signal logo, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, the 1 200 scale dock as model aircraft, and the item number information you see at the front of the box. All right, now you're looking at the back of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, and then there's some more information there on the left side of the box. And then on the right side of the box is the social media pages of Gemini Jets. You can pause and read that information if you like. In the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving. All right. Now you're looking at the top of the box, and all you see is pretty much the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the dope collectible model and warning information, as well as the item number information you see at the top of the box. Now you're looking at the bottom of the box, and all you see pretty much is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal you see at the bottom of the box. All right, now you're looking at the left side of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the 1 200 scale diecast model and item number information, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, as well as the aircraft type you're looking at the left side of the box. Now you're looking at the right side of the box. It's pretty much the same information on the left side of the box I showed you earlier on, all right? Now you're looking at the metal model stand that actually came with the model. And right up here is the little so-called pattern right here. And the sole purpose of this black pattern here, everyone, is not only that pad protects your model, it also prevented from being damaged or scratched when you decide to put your aircraft model on this particular model stand, all right? All right, now you're looking at the plastic bag here, and what's inside this plastic bag are the actual gear replacement doors, featuring the two little toothpicks for these gear replacement doors. Please stay tuned as I go into detail for the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors on this particular aircraft model, okay? 
All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of the Royal Air Force and how they came about and still operating strongly as the Air Force of the United Kingdom, plus all the details here at the front of the box here, as well as the information at the back of the box, plus the actual model stand that came with the model, as well as the gear replacement doors inside this plastic bag here, featuring the two little toothpick for these gear replacement doors. With no further ado, here is the actual model out of the packaging box. Let's check it out. There it is everyone, the Gemini Jets Royal Air Force VIP Airbus A330 MRTT Multi-Role Tanker Transport Voyager, better known as Boris Force 1 in their new livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. Alright, allow me to share you some information about the Airbus A330-200 MRTT, the Multi-Role Tanker Transport Voyager aircraft and how that came about. The Airbus A330 MRTT, the multi-role tanker transport aircraft, is an aerial refueling tanker aircraft, a military derivative based on the civilian Airbus A330-200 jetliner aircraft. It is designed as a dual-role air-to-air refueling and transport aircraft. This aircraft was converted by Airbus military for air refueling duties. There are five variants for this type of military aircraft. The A330 MRT, T, the KC-30A, the KC-45A, the Voyager KC-2, the Vo and the Voyager KC-3. The Airbus A330 MRTT, the multi-role tanker transport aircraft, has been ordered by the Royal Australian Air Force, the Royal Air Force, the United Arab Emirates Air Force, the Qatari Emery Air Force, the Royal Saudi Air Force, the French Air Force, the Royal Netherlands Air Force, the Republic of South Korea Air Force, the Republic of Singapore Air Force, the Belgian Air Force, the German Luftwaffe, and the Royal Norwegian Air Force. The Royal Australian Air Force was the actual launch customer of this particular aircraft type, receiving their very first one on June 1, 2011. And as of May 2022, or at the time of this video review posting, there were a total of 61 aircraft of this variant has been ordered by 12 customers with only 47 delivered and currently operating in service, while the remaining 14 are currently on back order and are awaiting delivery. Now, allow me to share you some information about the Royal Air Force Airbus A330-200 MRTT Multi-Royal Tanker Transport Voyager Aircraft. The Royal Air Force Airbus A330-200 MRTT, the multi-royal tanker transport Voyager aircraft, goes by another name which is called the Voyager KC-2 and the Voyager KC-3 aircraft respectively. However, this particular aircraft is actually a Voyager KC-3 aircraft as it was previously announced sometime back in January 2004 by the UK Ministry of Defense that a variant of the A330 MRTT had been selected to provide tanking service for the Royal Air Force for the next 30 years under the FSTA, the Future Strategic Tanker Aircraft Program, replacing the Royal Air Force's existing TriStar and VC-10 tankers. The Royal Air Force ordered a total of 14 of these military-type aircraft, receiving their very first one, which bared the registration ship number ZZ-330 on April 5, 2012, and received their 14th and final A330 multi-role tanker transport Voyager aircraft, which bared the registration ship number ZZ343 on September 6, 2016. And at the time of this video review posting, all of the Royal Air Force's 14 Airbus A330 MRTT, the multi-role tanker transport Voyager aircraft, are currently operating in service. Now let's talk about the livery scheme. That you see on this aircraft. The United Kingdom's government unveiled a brand new livery scheme on one of its Airbus A330-200 MRTTs, the multi-royal tanker transport KC-3 Voyager aircraft, which is operated by the Royal Air Force on June 25, 2020. As this particular Royal Air Force Airbus A330-200 MRTT, the multi-royal tanker transport KC Voyager aircraft, which bared the registration ship number ZZ-336, emerged from the Marshall Aerospace and Defense Group Aircraft Paint Shop Facility, where this aircraft was actually painted at. 
That's located on the grounds of Cambridge City Airport Facility, which is located in Cambridgeshire, England, as it took approximately 16 days to paint this entire aircraft in this particular livery scheme. The Airbus A330's new livery scheme paint job on this particular aircraft reportedly cost approximately 900,000 pounds, which actually equates to about 1.1 million US dollars as the aircraft was transformed from a gray color that featured the Royal Air Force billboard title font writing on the fuselage to this updated revised livery design that now features a predominantly your white color that now features the United Kingdom billboard title front, which is now emblazoned in gold, which can be visibly seen on the fuselage. But the one feature that actually stands out on this particular livery scheme is the tail fin design, which features the iconic Union Jack flag as some of the colors on the Union Jack flag can actually be seen draping down on the sides of the fuselage. The overall purpose for this particular livery scheme is to better represent the Prime Minister on official trips as well as to promote the country, the United Kingdom, around the world. As this particular VIP aircraft type has officially become the designated aircraft for transporting other Prime Ministers, government officials, as well as senior members of the royal family exclusively as this particular aircraft was even given the nickname Boris Force One, which is in reference to Boris Johnson, who is currently the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. The livery design on this particular aircraft was actually created and performed by Air Tanker Limited Services, as well as Airbus uh, DS, the design organization for Voyager, which took place respectively between February and May 2020. So, with all this information out of the way about this particular military aircraft, as well as how the United Kingdom got themselves involved in pursuing this aircraft, as well as the livery scheme on there, with no further ado, everyone, let's get down to business and allow me to show you all the details on this aircraft model, shall we? Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the port slash left side. We're gonna start at the front here where you see the uh, front nose landing gears. The landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the uh, fleet number 336. See the Peter 2s and the static ports, what have you. The radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, as well as the cockpit windows. I'm going to give you a better visual view of uh, those details later on in the model review. Please stay tuned for that part. But between the cockpit windows and the L1 entrance door is the air refueling console and camera area, which is this little camera you see right here. And the console and the camera area is where the refueling crew members operate from, from the front of the aircraft, which gives it better system stability to control the refueling airspace while the aircraft is in flight and at the same time provide day and night capability using 2D and 3D high definition technology from the cameras coming inside these consoles, okay? And then you see the um, Royal Air Force uh, decal and the Rondale logo right there. And then you see the um, the Royal Air Force Rondale that sits underneath the front windows right here, as well as on the wings of the aircraft. I'm about to show you that right now. There, on this side of the aircraft, as well as on the other side of the wing as well. There. You can add the Rondale underneath the wings here as well as on the Rondell logo on the other side of the wings underneath as well. Check this out. There. The Rondell right there. Uh, this is the current Rondell of the Royal Air Force of the United Kingdom. The... Um, this low visibility Rondell has been used and on camouflage aircraft since the 1970s. This is the 147 revised version of the Rondale since it was first introduced in June 2015. And now you're looking at the United Kingdom flag decal, which are displayed on the L1 and L2 doors, which is right here and right there. These flag decal actually represents the country where the Royal Air Force currently operates from as the Aerial Warfare Force of the United Kingdom. And then you see the... um. The crown, the E2R decal displayed by the L2 door, which is this right here. I'm going to bring it up a little closer. Check it out. Okay, there's the E2R decal right there. That's about as best I can do. I didn't want to blur the vision. And this is actually a Royal Insignia, which is actually called a Royal Cipher, 
which usually consists of the monarch name as well as the title, which are sometimes interwoven together and often topped by a crown, as the ER literally stands for Elizabeth Regina, who also goes by the royal crest name of Queen Elizabeth II. There you have it. Now I'm looking at the center of the aircraft where you see the United Kingdom emblazed in gold right there along with the nice little blue cheat line there. But underneath the wings is the landing bogey gears here including the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear door. Then you slide over this way the nice little engine with the engine collar in the air full detail there. And these are the Rolls-Royce Trent 772B-60 turbofan type engines that are actually used on this particular Royal Air Force VIP Airbus A330-200MRTT, the multi-role tanker transport KC-3 Voyager aircraft. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft model around. We're going to actually find out if the turbofan fan blades do spin. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the port side of the aircraft. And do the fan blades spin on here? Yes, they do. Perfect. And then you see the inboard landing light right there underneath the wing, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears on the side of the aircraft that features the landing gear struts, as well as the actual landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the engines here on the starboard side. And then do the fan blades spin over here as well? Yes, they do. Perfect. And then there's the inboard landing light right there, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears here on this side of the aircraft that features the landing gear struts as well as the actual landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft, we got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the radon nose cone, the landing gear nose gear door, the nose gear lights inside of the nose gear door, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front nose landing gears. All right, we're still under the wing here on the port side. There's another detail, some more information right here. The under wing refueling pod that's attached to the wing, which is this little deal you see right here. And this refueling pod that's attached to the wings is actually called the Cobham 905E under wing refueling pod. And the sole purpose of this refueling pod is to refuel up other military aircraft where it shoots out 600 gallons of fuel per minute using the extended hose that comes within the refueling pod. That's the sole purpose of that refueling pod there, folks. All right, now you're looking at the winglet wingtip device, which is painted in red, white, and blue there, along with the red navigation light you see displayed there next to this winglet wingtip device. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side. We see some more cameras right here and there as well. But there's the Royal, For Royal Air Force uh, decal and the insignia logo right there. But next to that um, Royal Air Force insignia logo is the actual registration ship number ZZ336. Registration ship number ZZ336. This is the seventh of 14 Airbus A330 200 MRTTs, the multi royal tanker transports that entered the fleet of the Royal Air Force. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on October 25, 2012, and was delivered to the Royal Air Force on September 21, 2015, as this particular aircraft was also painted in this particular livery scheme sometime between June 9th and June 25, 2020. Now, what you're looking at here is the back of the aircraft is the actual tail fin design that's displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft, which is this little tail fin design right here. The tail fin design that's displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft actually resembles that of the country's national flag, the Union Jack flag. Okay. Now you're looking at the back of the aircraft, what you're looking at is the APU exhaust hole, and there is a hole there. And then right above the APU is also, that's another infrared camera right there as well, as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Let's check it out. There it is. The Royal Air Force Airbus A330 MRTT, multi-royal tanker transport aircraft from the rear view angle. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard side of the aircraft, where you see the front nose landing gears, the landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the fleet number 336, the P2 static ports, the radome nose cone, the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the um, air refueling console and camera area right here, the uh, 
United Kingdom flag decal, the Royal Air Force decal, the United Kingdom flag decal right there as well, the Rondale, the Royal Air Force Rondale logo, as well as the uh, front cargo container loading door, the ER2 uh, emblem right there, as well as the United Kingdom uh, title displayed in gold, displayed in the middle of the aircraft, as well as the Rolls-Royce 772B engines right here with the uh, little details on the engine column, as well as the side vision view of the landing bogey gears here, include landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors. Now you look at the underwing refueling pod right here on this side of the aircraft right here as well. Then you see the winglet wingtip device is painted in red, white, and blue over here as well, as well as the green navigation light you see displayed there. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft here. What you see is the rear cargo container loading door, the AFT bolt bin door, and there's a couple more infrared cameras right there as well. And then you see the Royal Air Force uh, decal in the Rondell insignia logo, the registration ship number, as well as the tail fin design that resembles that of the Union Jack flag displayed here on the tail fin of the aircraft as well. And then there's the camera, another camera right there you see there as well. All right, before I show you this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view, as well as the undercarriage belly view as well, as well, and it's a lot of detail on the top of it as well as the bottom of the aircraft, please allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gears. I'm about to show you that right now. Let's get on to it. Rolls pretty good. Okay. And then the gears does tilt. And then the front nose gear swivels as well. You see there. There. And there. So with no further ado, let's check out this aircraft model from the area of bird's eye view. Let's check it out. Now you're looking at this aircraft model from the area of bird's eye view. We're going to start at the front where you see the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, the infrared cameras on both sides, the Royal Air Force Rondale logo on both sides. Then at the top of the aircraft, a high frequency antenna, and that's the satellite communications antenna. And that little dot right there, that's called the MMARSAT, which literally stands for International Maritime Satellite Antenna there. A couple of high frequency antennas there. There are a couple of anti-collision beacon lights. Another high frequency antenna, a couple more there. You see the United Kingdom uh, gold billboard tiles on both sides. You see the Royal Air Force uh, decal as well as the registration ship number on both sides. And then there's the tail fin of the aircraft, as well as the horizontal stabilizers. Uh, this sees a little dot right there, as well as over here as well. That little dot is actually called the luminaire light, and the sole purpose of that luminaire light is to light up this tail here when it flies during nighttime. Now let's check out the wings and the engines. See the engines there? No wing walkway. We've got the no-step warning information, as well as the flaps, slats, aileron spoilers, what have you. Fuel dump valve. The Rondell logo, as well as the winglet wingtip device is painted in red, white, and blue on this side of the aircraft. Now let's check out over here. The engine's right there. No wing walkway on the wings, but you got the no step warning information, as well as the flats, slats, aileron spoils, what have you. Fuel dump valve right there. The Rondell logo on this side, as well as the winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft is painted red, white, and blue as well. Now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model. We're going to start at the front as well. See the radon nose cone, the crew escape hatch door, the front nose landing gear, the front nose landing gear door, and see a hot couple of high frequency antennas, the Gemini Jets decal, uh, the anti collision beacon light, the hole where the stand goes in at. Then you slide up this way. And this right here is called a high definition BV. BEVS camera right there and then you come back here a couple more cameras right there right there and then the APU housing door and the horizontal stabilizers right there now let's check out the gears over here the engine there as well as the wings underneath because flaps, slats, aileron spoils, what have you fuel dump valve, the revealing pod, the refueling pod, sorry about that uh, the Rondell logo, the restoration ship number, as well as the winglet wingtip device. Now let's check out over here. 
the gears right here the engines right there as well as the wings underneath includes the flaps slats aileron spores what have you fuel dump valve the refueling pot on this side the air wings the um, Rondell logo as well as the uh, winglet wing tip device that's painted red white blue on this side as well All right, since I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft, which was a lot of detail up here, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft in just as much detail here as well. Now I'm going to put it on this nice little model stand that came with the model you see there that I showed you earlier. So with no further ado, everyone, here is the actual aircraft model on the stand. Let's check it out. All right, finally got this model on the stand, no problem, no hesitation. As you see it being displayed in the takeoff landing position with the model on the stand. Now I'm gonna let this model rotate in clockwise rotation. Uh, let it rotate and starting with the port side, let's check it out. The tail cam angle. The starboard side of the aircraft. The front of the aircraft. And back to the port side of the aircraft. All right, before I take this model off the stand, I got it at this angle for a reason. And the reason is the magnetic gears that actually came with the model. So I'm going to go ahead and take them all starting to the front gear. Let's see what I'm talking about here. Magnetic. See that? The outer bogey gear on the port side there, as well as the outer bogey gear on the starboard side there. All right, since I took all the gears off this model, I'm going to let you see this model at a different angle in flight mode slash so gears up position without the gears. Let's check it out. Now you're viewing this model in flight mode slash so gears up position without the gears with the model displayed on the stand. Now you got one or two options how you want to display your model. If you want to continue to display it like that, that's fine. You see these gear replacement doors inside this uh, plastic bag that I showed you earlier featuring the two little toothpicks. That's the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors. So you substitute your gears while you display your model like this while it's in flight mode slash gears up position with the model on the stand without the gears. Or you can do like I do, just keep it, keep the uh, gears on there in the gear down position. Gears up, gear down, your choice. I choose to leave mine on there because it adds more value to the model. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model, take this model off stand, and go ahead and wrap up this model review. All right. All right, let's talk about the modified seating configuration. Depending on the modified seating configuration on this aircraft, the Royal Air Force Airbus A330-200MRTT, the multi-role tanker transport KC-3 Voyager aircraft, can be modified to carry anywhere from 266 passengers in a two-class configurated cabin layout up to 380 passengers in a single-class configurated cabin layout, which allows a complete range of configurations from maximized troop support to complex customization suitable for VIP and guest missions. The Royal Air Force Airbus A330-200MRTT, the multi-role tanker transport Voyager aircraft, can also be configured, configured sorry about that, to perform medical evac missions as well. With up to 130 standard stretchers can also be carried on this aircraft. However, on this particular Royal Air Force Airbus A330-200 MRT, the multi-royal tanker transport KC-3 Voyager aircraft, which is a VIP configurated version, it seats 158 passengers in a two-class configurated cabin layout. All right, here's the breakdown. In section one, which will be about from here to about right here, you have two bunker beds plus a closet, section two, which will be from about right here, all the way right, right here. You have 58 business class VIP style seats, trade delegates, government officials, members of the royal family, as well as former and current prime ministers. Section three, which is the uh, VIP area, 
in the makeshift cabin area, which would be this section right here. And section four, which is the back pack of the aircraft here. You have 100 economy class style seats for the media press as well as TV crews. And the maximum flying range for this particular Royal Air Force VIP Airbus A330 200 MRTT, the multi royal tanker transport KC 3 Voyager aircraft, is approximately 8,000 nautical miles, which equates to about 9,206 miles. Well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting it. If you can get your hands on it, a couple of still still have it. Snatch it up where you can because it's starting to become scarce as we speak. So if you can snatch it up, highly recommend it. So with that said, please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. And above all, everyone, please stay safe out here. Peace.